looking for a simple way to save all your squash seeds? In this video, I'm going to show you how simple it is to save your squash seeds. Okay, for saving your squash seeds, you want to, again, make sure that you are selecting a mature squash plant because you want the seeds to grow up to their full capacity, so to speak. So when you're selecting them in your garden, you wanna make sure that you know what the mature variety looks like. And I always like to let it get as big as I can as possible. So typically what I do, and I recommend you to do, is to just pick one plant on, the, on your um, squash plant and just make sure that you let that go because um, for some types of squash, you want to you want to actually pick it when it's um, very young because of the flavor and just the, the taste um, in this in this particular one we're doing this is a crook neck squash uh, you can also do this for just your green zucchini one like a black beauty zucchini uh, there's you can also do the same type for your winter squashes but this one mainly focuses on the summer squash. The, the same methods are used for the winter squash as well. Except the winter squash, you generally don't pick them until, the, until they are mature. So I have a few, just a few uh, of the crookneck squash, but these are also, you know, any kind of yellow squash and the zucchini squash, you might notice that they, that they will have different differences. So this is a young, these two are pretty young uh, squash. So these are perfect for eating. And these are more what I would uh, pick if I want to do a stir fry or some kind of uh, squash dish. I would pick these ones. This, these ones are still the same crook neck, and as you can notice that they are a little bit different. This one is is a little bit lighter in yellow color, and this one is a almost like a orange color for that. So as you can notice, one of them is much bigger, and the color is an orange. So this is this is the ideal one. We can still we could still save some seeds from here, but this is what I would, if I was selecting just the ones for the seeds, it would be this one right here. On this one too, it, you know, I would let this grow a little bit more, but I've actually saved some seeds from something that's a little bit um, similar to this and they did grow just fine. But I'm gonna leave this the way it is because it does actually mature a little bit uh, when you leave it out. This is the one that we're gonna do for this video. So on your particular variety of squash that you have, just you wanna make sure that you're selecting the, the most mature one. The other, um, the other info that I would make sure is that you are getting a open pollinated or what's called an heirloom variety. And that basically means that the plant is going to be the same plant. So the seeds that you get from here is gonna be the same exact plant that this is. It's gonna be this, the children of the, of the parent plant are gonna be the same. The hybrid variety of plants, they, uh, they may not produce the same offspring um, each, each time because of the way that uh, they're cross-pollinated. So they may um, have a different color, or they may have a different taste. Even though they might look the same, they could have some different characteristics that um, when they were um, doing the hybrid stage, they were crossing them together to get the best, um, best of both particular plant. So always stick with the heirloom and open pollinate. So let me show you what we do to get the, to get the seeds out of this. All right, so I did want to mention too, one of the things that you that you will need is, is some type of knife to cut this open. It just makes it easier for getting the seeds out of here. I don't think you want to try to blunt open this up. Um, the other thing you want to have is there are these envelopes that you can get that are fantastic. Um, to store the seeds, but you can use anything that that will just keep the seeds, you know, somewhat dry and some, Something that's I prefer something that's out of the light. So that's why I like a little, something a little bit darker. I don't usually like the um, I don't usually like the clear plastic Ziplocs or the little small ones. I mean they're fine, but you still have to keep them on light. This I know that they'll be out of light and it's still breathable so I, that's why I, I like these ones and they're so cheap. I bought a box of them and probably, I don't think I'll ever go through all of them, um, even though I do save a lot of seeds. So what you wanna do is, I like to just cut the ends off. All right, and you can kinda see where this is gonna go. 
a lot of the seeds are going to be down at this end. So, so what I do is I cut open half of it like this. I don't go all the way through. Just be careful if you got a knife here. I want to be able to not uh, cut all the seeds in here. So I kind of slice this in half, and then I go around. And I do the same thing to the other side. So I'm only cutting half because I want to pull this thing open. And the reason that you do this is that it's going to make sure you don't slice through any of the seeds. Now, if you do, that's okay. It's fine. There's so many seeds in there that you're not going to really have to worry too much about um, which seeds you, know, that you want to save. So, as you can see, the, the open cavity is open. Um, another thing you can use is a spoon. And then what I do is just kind of scrape all of them out. Like so... There's a lot of seeds in the squash. Seems like most most varieties of the squash will have tons of seeds. So I'm pretty sure one will do it for most people. If you save just the seeds for one variety, you know, one of your plants. So make it a good one. Just make sure you get a nice big one. So I'll do this for this side too. Alright, so now that you've got the, the seeds pretty much extracted out. For the squash seeds, I, I just try to separate as much of this pulp as I can out of it. It's a little bit easier to do that with the squash seeds as compared to some some other plants. Uh, some of the plants are really kind of hard to separate everything out. But the squash is pretty good because they're much bigger seeds and they don't really have much hanging on to them. So. So I just try to get as much of this pulp out of the way as I can, get it all separated out. So what I'll do is I'll fast forward this so you don't have to watch me do this for like five minutes. Okay, so now that you've got it all separated out, the next step that I do is I don't even leave this you know, you can use a paper towel if you want or some type of coffee filter. But I just generally, I just put it right on a piece of paper because these will just dry right on here. I don't even rinse them off. Uh, it's just a step that I don't do for my squash seeds. You can if you really want to, but these will, if you, as long as you let these sit out for a good seven to 10 days, these take a little bit longer to dry than some of the smaller seeds. So I leave these out for about seven to 10 days. Now I'm not really gonna put any more in here because I will never use this in probably uh, five or six years. But uh, if, you, if you obviously need to, if you have a, a large area that you're planting a lot of these plants, then obviously you wanna save as many as you can. But this supply right here is more than enough that I need because I do grow these each year. So I will s probably not save next year's crop for this, but. I may uh, trade these. And that's another thing too for, for seed saving. Look for some groups. There are some groups out there that will um, that you can sign up for. And they, uh, they allow you to exchange seeds with other members that in there. Uh, seed Saver, I think it's Seed Saver. Or seed Savers, I think, is, is the main one. I'll, I'll post a link up here just to uh, one of the places that I, I'm a member of. I'm sorry, I don't know the name off the top of my head right now. But I've, um, I've done exchanges with, with other folks on there and I just would offer some of these up and maybe I would make a few packets of this so that somebody had uh, enough seeds to get started with a few plants. And then I would be able to trade for, you know, to get something that I was looking for. It's a great way to, to just meet other people and also learn, you know, what others are growing in the area. Sometimes you might find some really cool varieties of plants by doing that. So I'll post, the, I'll post the link to that group down in the show notes uh, if you wanted to. So at this point, this is, this is really what you have to, this is all you have to do for this. Um, like I said, you want to let these sit out in an area that's going to get, um, you know, some kind of um, where they can dry. You want it somewhere that it's not um, moist or humid because it will take a little bit longer to dry. The other thing, like I said, is you want to have an envelope. And what I always do is add the name and what it is on here. And you want to have the different type of variety that you're having because, you know, if you're growing several different uh, plants, uh, you know, of squash, then you want to know which one you, you want to pull out of here. And then I also put the date, the year on there. 
So there you have it. Um, I will also, what I'll also do is I'm gonna link a, um, a link to a playlist right above, and that playlist is all of my other uh, seed saving tips that I have for other vegetables, other herbs. Well, uh, if you could also please leave us a green thumb. Let us know that we're making great videos for you. Also, if you could hit the subscribe button down below and then hit the bell so you get notified of any new videos that we do have. Also, we have a website called gardenerthumb.com where we have lots of tips, tricks, hacks, all that other good stuff out there. Well, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it and I'll see you in the next video.